So check it out. This is the new HTM Workshop gamepad. New soldering project that we have here from HTM Workshop. It's got a couple different options. It's got a practice area over here. It's got a 555 timer circuit over here. And the best part of this is you get to build your own video game controller. So if you look at the PCB board, there's a couple of different areas. There's just a general practice area. This is the area I recommend you start your soldering practice. Learn how to solder on the practice area. Then you want to move on to your 555 timer circuit. This is going to be the first circuit you solder together. This is going to be a working functional circuit that's going to make an LED blink. So the next thing you're going to do is solder the rest of this board, including the Arduino, the screen, resistors, capacitors, and buttons. And once you do that, you're going to be able to play a video game. Let's get started. Okay, some things I recommend having for this project. Good solder, a good iron, and a smoke evacuator. This is a nice iron by Heiko. Can you use a cheap $10 iron you get on Amazon? Sure you can, but you're going to have a lot more fun if you get a nice soldering iron. All right, so before watching this video, I hope you go and watch my other video, and I'll put a link over here to an introduction to how to solder. If you really want to get quick started right away, I'm just going to go over some real basics. This is the part that's going to get hot, this whole piece right here. So you want to be careful of that, right? You're going to hold it like this. You're going to turn your iron on, wait till that heats up to around 650 degrees. Once it gets hot enough, you're gonna be able to melt the solder onto that iron. So you wanna make sure you can do that first. If Ideally, you're using rosin coarse solder, and so you're cleaning that tip off as you're adding a little bit of solder to that. Next thing you're gonna do is you're going to put one of the resistors through the through hole of this practice area, just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder the other side of the board. All right, so go ahead, bring your hot iron in right over here. You're gonna to wanna to bring the solder in, in between the leg of the resistor and your hot iron. You're gonna melt the solder on there. So once you get familiar with soldering in the practice area, now you wanna move on to your 555 timer circuit. So to start working on your 555 timer circuit, you're gonna need a 470 nanofarad capacitor, a 555 timer chip, three 1K ohm resistors, and one LED. My recommendation when you're starting out is Get started with the 1K ohm resistors, go ahead, solder those in, then follow that up with the 555 timer, and lastly, the LED and the capacitor. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and soldered those on, those three resistors on, go ahead and trim off the legs. Now the key with these next three parts are these all have a specific orientation they need to put into the board. So to start out with the 555 timer, you'll notice there's a little notch in the 555 timer. Depending on the manufacturer, there might be a dot in this upper left-hand corner of the chip, but you wanna make sure you orient that notch to the notch that's seen here on the board. So when you put that in, there we go. All right, so once you get that 555 timer chip in, make sure the notch is in the correct orientation. And then you can turn the board over and start soldering. All right, now it's very important that you put your LED in the correct orientation. The LED has a cathode and an anode. The cathode is the short leg, the anode is the long leg of your LED. You're gonna to wanna to put it in this orientation where the cathode goes into the square pad on the board. Finally, you're, you're gonna to wanna to take your capacitor. Now, if you look at the capacitor, it's gonna have a white stripe there and a short leg and a long leg. So once again, there's a polarity to this capacitor and you wanna make sure you put it in the correct orientation. So you're gonna put the capacitor in with the long leg going into the blue side and the short leg going into the white side of that footprint right there. Once again, make sure your capacitor is in the correct orientation. Now there's two ways you can go ahead and test the circuit. You could either go ahead and solder up the Arduino Nano and then hook up your USB cable to a computer or other charger and uh, power that Arduino and then that'll feed power into your 555 timer circuit. Or you can just simply take a nine volt battery, hook up these leads and make sure you put the black on the negative, the red on the positive, and you should see that LED flash on and off. So congratulations, you just built your first working circuit. Okay, now that we know you can solder, it's time to go on to the next phase and build your video game controller. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my resistors, my capacitor, and my buttons. I tend to start with the components that are not gonna stick off the board too much as my first things that I solder. So you can see I went ahead and soldered the resistors on, the capacitors on, and the buttons. 
Now the good thing is these capacitors are ceramic capacitors, so they don't have a polarity to them, so there's no orientation to worry about. Same thing with resistors, never have to worry about orientation there. As we do the diodes, right, the LEDs, and the speaker, we do have to worry about orientation once again. So we pay attention there, and obviously the screen, we wanna make sure the orientation for that and the Arduino are all correct. So let's get started. Okay, just like before, we're gonna make sure that the cathode of our LED goes into the square pad on the board. Okay, next is the speaker. We wanna go ahead and put the positive part of our speaker onto that positive terminal right there. Okay, so for this next part, we need to put the Arduino on. So we either have a choice, we can go ahead and directly solder on the Arduino. If we're gonna do that, we wanna make sure that the USB port aligns with that USB identification spot right there. We align all the pins and we push it in and solder it on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and use the header pins on this one so that I can use that Arduino for other projects if I want to. Hopefully you've developed a decent little rhythm to your soldering now because obviously you're gonna to have to do 15 solder joints on this side and 15 solder joints on this side. It's always good to come in, check your solder joints, make sure you're not getting any solder bridges, which is a connection between two of these pins. Uh, you can see some of these pins over on the other side I was too quick with, probably didn't get in quite enough solder on there. So I can come back in and fill those in with additional solder if needed. Great, so once you get all those soldered in, go ahead and take your Arduino Nano and line it up to the pins. You wanna make sure that's lined up nice, pretty nicely before you go ahead and try to push it in there. But there we go. All right, now, your code should already be loaded in to the Arduino Nano. So all you gotta do is power this up or you could connect power using the battery pack. I wanna run this off a battery, a nine volt battery. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is solder these lead wires directly on to the correct pads. So first I'm gonna pre-tin the wires and then tin the pads here. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit of solder to this pad. That'll make it easier to solder the wire on. Next, you're gonna to wanna to tin the wires. The way I do this is I put the soldering iron on a table, make sure it's steadied, but then I will add a little bit of solder to the iron and then drag the wire across. Same thing with the black one. Now I'm just gonna come in here and heat up both the wire and the solder together. I wanna to make sure those get firm in place. Same thing on this side. Some additional things you can do if you're running this off battery, you'll notice with this holder, there's three drill holes, which you can't actually drill directly into this zone in the PCB board. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and drill that holder into your PCB board, hold it there. An even easier way, and the way that I prefer to do it, is to just go ahead and glue uh, this holder onto the back of your PCB board. So you can take hot glue, or I'm sure there's some other types of glue that you could use out there. This way you can still remove the battery itself and keep the battery holder in place if you ever need to replace the battery. So hopefully you enjoyed this project. I've noticed there are quite a few projects out there with different types of Arduino based video games and all those could be uploaded onto here. You just might have to change a couple of the inputs to make sure that the buttons match up with what buttons we're using over here. So hope you enjoyed the project and check out some of our other videos.